What's up, guys? It's your girl, Emily Curl, and we're here at our iHeartRadio headquarters in New York City, and we have Veda joining us today. Can we give it up for Veda in our studio here in New York? It's so fun because I was just telling you this. The last time I saw you, 2021, on Zoom. Oh, my God. I wonder where I was. Was I in my apartment? Do you know? You were in your apartment, and it was fun because Bitch Don't Be Mad just came out, and you did a special performance, and now... So much has happened mm. for you. I feel like so many fans are eager to hear your music. You have your latest project, When I Hear Your Name, your new album. This is your debut album that just released. Yes. Tell us about the project. It's oh. so exciting. So much so much life has gone on. I know. It's been years in the making. I'm so proud of it. It's 13 songs. We have amazing features, like Ty Dolla Sign's on there. SZA wrote a song. Lucky Day wrote a song. So amazing people worked on it, and I'm just so proud of it. But it all happened organically and naturally. And yeah, it was a challenge though. Was the it? The whole project. Yes. What, what was the most challenging part? My A&R loves to push me. And I like being pushed, but we fight because we're very close. So we got in so many fights. I would be crying. He'd be like, <laughs> he, and all the songs had so many processes. Like my yeah. song Through the Night originally was just me and bass. And we added the free nationals and we added a bridge. And then we, you know, we just changed things so many times. So it's hard to know when things are done. I was going to say, how did you know when the project felt right? I don't know. Just felt good. My <laughs> A&R so helps me out. But yeah, it just, it felt good. It was interesting reading about the album. You had a four-year-old track with Kay Trinata. I've been working with Kay Trinata forever. The first song I have with him is called Teen Scene on my mm-hmm. project that I have. Yeah. But Teen Scene, we had forever. And I cut it. We added Buddy on it later. So that was another song that was a process. But that kind of started my relationship with Kay Trinata. And we've just been working ever since. And we work really well together. Yeah. We have a project coming too. Oh, really? No release date yet. But oh, shoot. What like, can you tell us? It's like five or six songs. Here's my whole thing right now. I'm this, when I hear your name project is so emotional and I'm passionate mm-hmm. and I'm like so over talking about boys and being in my feelings. So it's kind of just about dancing and going to the club and having fun. <laughs> So we need both sides of the coin. refreshing for me. It's funny reading about like this project, you talking about how like you don't mind like airing your business. You're like, in fact, I love it. And I that do. that resonated with me. I was like, I'd really? love to hear it. Yeah. yeah. I've gotten a lot better over the years because I used to get in so much trouble for trusting everybody and just mm. giving all my business away. But that's how I relate to people and connect. So I don't think that it's that bad. Yeah. But it can get bad when but, you tell the wrong people. But Certain for your things. next project, you're like, I'm staring away from that. A little bit. I'm just tired of being sad. Sad girl summer has, has gone and passed. Yeah, exactly. I'm a manifest. Just like going out and having fun. To go back a little bit, you've got your start posting covers on YouTube and Instagram. And now you're Rock Nations, 2020 mm-hmm. breakout artist. What's uh, it like for you? I mean, just to hear that alone, I mean, to know that some people are recognizing your talent and your value. It's wild. I think that it all happens so fast, but also so slow at the same time. It's little things happen every single day that kind of just lead you somewhere. And one day you look back and it's like, whoa, how did I get here? So... Yeah, I used to do covers, Made a Mondays. Every Monday I would post a cover, but I sucked at it. I was so inconsistent. It was like a Monday a month I was posting a cover. Yeah, it's crazy now that I've worked with the people that I've worked with coming from just putting songs on SoundCloud and YouTube. What is your favorite cover that you've ever done? Because your fans have speculated. They think they know which one it is. Oh, one plus one? Is that it? No, that's what they said. Don Tolliver's. Oh, Swain on West Yeah. I love that song too. I know that I did something well if I listen to it on my own. That's every time I'm on a plane, that's a song that I like take off to. Yeah. It just puts me in a peaceful mood. So Swain on West Timer. Yeah, but the song that I'm adding to my tour set list also, my favorite song to sing in the world that isn't mine is One Plus One by Beyonce. Oh my so God. that's another one. Are you seeing Beyonce live? Are you going to her show? I did see her already. You did? I Where'd you see her? I sobbed my eyes out. She did One Plus One as the second song. And I'm like, why she make me cry within the first 10 minutes of the show? But the show was, I, I saw her in New York. The show was truly phenomenal. Yeah. I was like, I felt like I had a Beyonce hangover afterwards. I can't. Oh even, yeah. How do I, how do I, get, how does you top this? I was on a high for like a week. I had Sounds a spiritual like- cleanse. Or something. Well, you love Beyonce, but a lot of people love your music. So a lot of famous fans, Kylie Jenner, Jimmy Lovato, Monica, are all fans of yours. Anyone in particular that has told you they loved your music you got really excited about? Yara. Shahidi? Shahidi, yes. Oh. I met her recently, like a week ago at an event. And she was like, oh my God, my friend just put me onto your music. And that was just amazing because she's such a cool person. I've seen her in all the shows. And so that kind of was interesting. It's just cool because you never know who's heard your music before. Yeah. You know, like I would have no clue if I didn't run into her that she had been listening to my music. So that's amazing. That's cool. And yeah. now a lot of people are going to hear your music because you're going on your first solo tour. Yes. How are you feeling? Are you nervous? Are you excited? <sighs> How do you prepare? I One thing about me is I don't like to think about things until it's about to happen. Because oh, if I prep good. too much, that's, I, I feel overthink. like that's great. I'm a, a present- Pisces, so everything's oh. last minute and spontaneous for Ooh. me. So I haven't really thought about it, to be honest. But it's getting there. <laughs> We're like a week and a half away. So I'll think about it like a day or two before. What? 
Like to really just process it. I don't want to freak myself out now because in every day leading up to it, I'm just dreading. Because it's a nerve wracking thing. Like my first tour, I opened up for her and Jasmine Sullivan, but I've never done my own tour. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. Anything you learn from them that you want to carry into your show? One thing about them is that their shows never got old. After I performed, I would go and watch them in the crowd every single night. And it was just amazing every time. So I think just switch it up and have fun. And Jasmine just sang her ass off, which was like... I bet. She made me want to just go like do vocal lessons every single day. So yeah. <laughs> and that's coming from you. It's like, damn. <laughs> no, but she's incredible. It's amazing. Well, we're so excited to see you on tour. We're so excited to have you here. And we thought we could play a little game for our audience to get to know you a little better. Okay. So we have what we call behind the gram, where we want you to take us on a journey through mm-hmm. your Instagram. We pulled a few of our favorite shots. Tell us a story behind each one and we can go through it. Does that sound good? Yeah, so I'm excited. By the way, you have a lot to work with. So like, we're excited. I love this. Instagram. Okay, so our first one, here we go. All right, so this is obviously you and Pharrell working on the album. Yes. Which is wild. What was it like working for him? It was amazing. We haven't put those songs out yet. So recently, my most recent project is not even an album. It's technically an EP. So I haven't even been calling it my debut album, but everybody assumes it is. So I'm just kind of accepted it. Oh, okay. But him and I are working on my project that's going to be after this one, which we have barely started. Yeah, I did a few days with him in Miami. It was amazing. He's an alien. Like I left there feeling like on a high for like a week. I just felt so amazing and his energy's great. He told me some things that made me cry. Like, like he was just what? complimenting my voice. He called me his inspiration. <gasps> And then I had to go to his bathroom and I shed a tear too. Because it's just amazing. Like I'm in Pharrell's Craig studio and, and he's just complimenting me. And I'm just like talking to him and hanging out and watching him work. We did like three songs, four songs maybe. This yes. stuff with me just obviously reading about, you know, your project and, and working with him is you said that he's like the most collaborative artist. Like really appreciate yeah. your opinion. And that's interesting. And it's like, crazy because you wouldn't think the most legendary people would be like that. But I think that's probably why he's so amazing and still just keeps on getting bigger and bigger because he's just I don't know he's humble and he's open to hearing what I like who am I compared to Pharrell you know it's like I don't think he gives a fuck well I didn't until he started asking me for my opinion so (laughs) and then you're like oh shit now I'm nervous (laughs) I know and I was like I'm not gonna tell him I don't like anything so (laughs) you're like it's all perfect it was pointless 10 out of 10 yeah but that's funny that's so cool to hear though when when you hear of that yeah yeah he's amazing I love it okay so let's pull up our next one I have to ask you all this because this one I have you laughing out loud I don't want so. people to think I'm rude for this one. <laughs> they need to know the BTS. The, the caption, I got to stop letting my attitude slip in public. Oops. By the way, it's so funny. This is my friend Angelique who's interviewing. And oh, really? And she's interviewing. So hi, Angelique. And she's interviewing Sydney Sweeney. Yeah. Let me see you in the back. Tell us about this moment. So basically, here's the real truth. I think people thought that I was getting mad at like a photographer, but my manager was there and he just does the most. His name is Jason. I feel like he's about to pop up behind me because we're talking Jason? about him. Um, he had, so I have a digital camera that I bring everywhere it's like one of those old like <clears throat> digital cameras and I made him take pictures of me but he wouldn't stop and he was getting in everybody's way I was just like Jason so and he was embarrassing me that's why I did that but we got the good pic so <laughs> that's all that matters yeah did you get to chat with Sydney no but she was really nice everybody was kind of t- attacking like, her yeah so I just let her that, gracefully walk by that was a crazy event anyone else that you were excited to meet that night Steve Lacey was there and I oh. met him which was cool oh that's cool I was at the store buying a dress for this and Terry Joe walked by me so it was a day full of stars <laughs> oh my god okay so let's go to our next first oh off my god. you look a fire thank you but then the caption i regret leading don't hate me did you delete uh, this and repost i did happened? i'm like the most indecisive person i keep saying i'm a pisces but it is a pisces thing i'm so indecisive i don't know i was just overthinking it and i just posted it too early in the day nobody cared about it so i reposted it, so I reposted it <laughs> later that night it back to life yeah because i was looking at them later like damn Ada, these are too good to not show the world i can't believe you archive that i know thank you i was in new york with my management and I make him take all my pictures. So, and we were just bored, it was like 3 a.m. I know he wanted to go home so bad. He's right there laughing. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to go home, but we, I and made you him stay And up. you got the shot, you dedicated yes. it. What did you, were you mad when she deleted the post? No, because I knew that she didn't get back up. She goes through that. <laughs> yes. You knew that was gonna happen. They know me, yeah. That's funny, okay. All right, what about our next one? This was so cool. This has to be a crazy moment for you as an artist. What's it like when you see like, something physical in your hands like your big vinyl reveal it's amazing i think there's right now i'm in a place where there's so many things happening behind the scenes that i don't really know about and it's so cool to just see like this is my my vinyl that we're working on but seeing the pictures that we took and they're in posters and somebody printed that somewhere and shipped it to it or brought it to me like it's just so much going on it just feels so amazing to me but yeah that was my first time seeing my vinyl like mock-ups in person and seeing these pictures that we took of the Virgin Islands like printed out 
and like this tall. It's amazing. Well, being so indecisive, like when you saw it, were you like, I love it? Or were you like, I have some ideas? No, I couldn't at that point. It would kill me. <laughs> but I've learned to just force myself to make a decision and mm. just stick with it, you know? Because yeah. I drive my team crazy. They're like, made us too late. You can't change it now. So I've kind of learned once I say something. It's done. It's done, yeah. Love Except that. for my Instagram. That's the only thing that I can do that with. <laughs> that you can archive the video. Yeah. Okay. Our next one. This is insane. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay, tell me about this fit. Tell me about your style. Where did this come from? So... I have a friend named Sada. She's a stylist and a photographer, and we were just bored, mm -hmm. like complaining about how bored we were in life. And we just went, I paid like $250 to go to like a studio in downtown LA, like the, one of those photo studios. Yeah. And we just took pictures. And that was her dress that she actually cut open. It wasn't supposed to be open like that, but she got a knife and cut it. What? How did she know that was gonna work? She's just <laughs> one of those, she's one of those creative girls that makes anything look good. And she kind of just makes her own outfits out of whatever. Like, I don't have that, but she does. And she That's did a it for me. Does she style you? Do you guys work together a lot? She does sometimes. A lot of my recent posts, she styled. Like I have this like bikini, post on top of my rooftop of my building that she did and everything is I work so well last minute so that was a very last minute thing and that's funny because that was actually on my digital camera we did the photo shoot with like a professional camera all the fancy stuff but I actually like the, the digital cameras but do you have a digital camera you swear by like is there one that you like love to use I have one now it's like a canon old it was like $80 from some film store in New York I just like the old ones because it's the not, old school it's not vibe. too perfect. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to our next one because I feel like I cannot relate to anything more. Ew. <laughs> I forgot this was up there. I love this. This is your dating red flags. <sighs> it's real. Number one, if he calls women females, just like no. Like females, I don't call you male. Number two is when... I think for me, it's when a guy doesn't ask about your life. I am so such a curious person, so I'll be dating a guy and I'll just want to get to know them about their family, like blah, 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 like all that kind of stuff. But I've had a few situations where they literally have not asked me one question about myself. Like, what are you here for? If you don't even want to. Yeah, like, such a turn off. They literally don't know who they're talking to. Ew. <laughs> no, I love that you did it. I feel like all of those are so true. Especially the second one when it's like, if there's, someone's not curious, then it's like, what would you I just know. agree? Do you just want anyone who likes yeah. you? It's I, like, I think you know, that is what it is. I've dated too many guys like that, and we'll be at dinner, and I'm curious. So I'll sit there and ask about your whole life, and they just answer. And then it's like, okay, what's the next question? Like, I'm not here to interview you. But. And then they're like, I like you so much. It's like, well, literally, who am I? I know. <laughs> you actually don't I know think who they I am. Just, I think they like their ego stroke. I think they that's do. What it is. Yeah. Okay, so our next one, we have this photo here. First off, the whole fit's amazing. But I want to take a Thank moment you. for the caption. What's the craziest thing you ever did for love? And I'm curious, what's the craziest thing you ever did for love? I think this is a thing about love in general. You can't control who you love, and sometimes you mm. just love crazy people. I don't think I've done anything crazy for love. I don't know, like the other day I was with this man on the street screaming in public, and we're just so mad in the moment that we don't care, but then I, like an hour later, once we were done, I was like, what if somebody got that on video and it went viral and then like, I'm so exposed, you know? Just, I don't know. Sometimes when you love somebody, you just don't care about anything. So true. It's like it's the like whole world doesn't exist. Full goggles. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I used to just not work and I wouldn't go to the studio. And it's like so stupid, but I don't know. Yeah. So speaking of the studio, let's actually go to our next one. We talked about Lucky Dave in the studio. Tell us about this. This was the session for Through the Night and okay. Clarity, which are both of my projects. Yeah. It was a good time. He likes to talk shit. We were all drinking and eating and just playing games. We stopped and played like a card game at one point and we just had a really fun session and those are the best sessions. Do you feel like you get the best stuff out of those yeah. two? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always say that I hate when making music feels like I'm in school because sometimes mm. you go to a session and you meet people and it's like, hi, nice to meet you. Let's talk about life and like write an amazing song in the next three hours, you know? So sometimes it's weird and it feels forced, but with him it's like just normal. He's just a natural writer and probably the best vocal producer I've ever worked with. Oh, really? Yeah, because he was telling me yeah. things I was doing in the song. I mean, some of it's natural and obviously I can do it, but a lot of the little things, he'd be like, slow your vibrato right here, add a little rasp right here, like emphasis on this. Oh. Like he's very good at it. And I was actually in shock because I've worked with a billion vocal producers, but he like but shocked me at yeah. how good he was. And you liked the way it sounded, but like when you yeah. heard it back, it like made a big difference. Yeah, and I cut that song in like an hour, which is crazy because on my own, I mean, usually I cut songs quick, but with him, I do three takes and he's like, that was the one. And he forced me to move on. Because I could but sit and like, do the same yeah. line for 10 minutes. Do you normally yeah. produce yourself with vocals? I don't yeah, I never work with anybody. <sighs> he just did it because he was there, but I never. I'm such a control freak. But I My feel team like, yeah. has been forcing me to, out of it. 
Yeah, because I feel like you've been working with a lot of people now. Like, yeah. Usually when I work on a song or a project, whatever, it's me and my engineer, and that's it. Wow. I don't like people in the room. It's like a sacred experience. I don't like strangers. It is. It's like all the things that I have to compromise, that's the only thing that I'm not going to compromise. So do you think you work with Lucky Day again? Like, is this like... Oh, yes. He's, okay. Yeah, we text all the time. I haven't really started my next album yet, but he'll be on it for sure. We got an next one for you. We got to talk about this selfie for a second, because <laughs> you're with, obviously, the queen. Yes. Brianna, which oh, is amazing. My God, I cried. Get, did you? I love her. I, love I her. really do. And sh it's crazy because she has shaped so mm. many people's childhoods. Even when we were watching the Super Bowl, it's like I wanted to just cry because these are hits from our whole life that bring back memories. And it's just amazing how one person can have so much power on people's lives and just the world. You know, like she's just like an icon. So what when did I'm, you think when she announced her like baby bump? Like, were you? I didn't notice it, it at first. I was at like Tao in LA and it, everybody was drunk and screaming and in the way. I couldn't really even watch it that well. <laughs> but at the end, I think we all kind of realized. You're like, wait a second. Prayers. But the, I feel like the rumors were around at that time. So yeah. everybody, I don't think anybody was like surprised. Oh, because that was her second kid. Oh, we were like, oh my yeah. God, we're never getting music. I think that's <laughs> what everybody yeah, said. We, yeah, do you think we're ever getting that ninth album? I don't know. Maybe in a couple years. But that was at her Fenty Beauty party. She walked in, my a &R, who's also her a &R, introduced us, and she was like, oh my God, let's get a selfie. And I just took it, and then I started crying. It was a big moment for me. Okay, so the last one we have for you. I just thought this was so cool, and this has to be an amazing moment for you to see your fans reacting to your music. I, mean, I was in shock. Minute. Yeah, well, what's it like getting to see your fans engage with stuff like this? Well, it's amazing. I'm a secret <clears throat> Twitter. I type in my name and see what people are saying all day Do long. Do you? Oh, so you're Because I want to see the real stuff. I don't want to see what people are telling me. I want to see what they're telling the world and they don't think I'm going to see it. Because yeah. then that's like the real reviews. And everybody's so had true. amazing things to say. I'm proud of it. It shows that taking your time is worth it. This whole project is so real and raw and I didn't lie about a single thing on it. Like I really mean everything I said. So I think that it just shows that that works out. What do you think mm -hmm. is the biggest lesson you learned through this project? What the biggest thing you learned about yourself? I think I'm still learning like trust people. I don't trust anybody's opinion except mm -hmm. for like one or two people. Actually, maybe Rihanna's. I, yeah, Rihanna. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't, it's confusing because it is like trust people because I'm such a control freak with my voice. And when people tell me what to sing, I don't like being told what to do. But at the same time, they were right. But at the same time, I didn't get too many opinions on this. So it's maybe like keep your circle small when you're working on a project. Don't let everybody hear. But Interesting. Yeah. this project was an outlet for me to just get out all this relationship shit because I was going through a toxic, like dark relationship, but it was passionate but like so like fucked up at the same time this project was just me getting all that out of my system so i just feel like a breath of fresh air it's been it's like it's off moving my on. shoulders yeah it's like in the art now it's in the world exactly did yeah. this person reach out to you about the album like have you heard yeah they know it's about them okay i think they love it <laughs> It's like an ego boost. Which is a red flag. You know what I mean? It is a red flag. Because they just like, they love the songs. They just hear them and it's like, they just think it's funny. It's like, I'm actually, I was actually sobbing while I sang this about yeah, you. Yeah, it's, like, it's actually whatever. really emotional. Yeah. <laughs> well, look at you. You're iHeart. You're doing interviews. You're doing that. Exactly. You're going on a tour. It's like, who came out the better side? Exactly. It was worth something. Well, man, we're so excited for you. Like we said, we have all your fans here. Anything that you want to say to them? When I hear your name out now, listen now, tour starts August 22nd. Chicago, the When I Hear Your Name tour. Go to madersworld.com for info. Come to Europe. I'm performing in Europe for the first time. And yeah, thank you to everybody that listens to my music and supports me. And thank it. you guys for having me. Aw, well, Mayday, we're so happy to have you. We're so excited for you. Can you give it up one more time, Mayday in our studio? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Make sure you listen to all of Mayday's music on iHeartRadio, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out more over here and don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. See you next time.